Welcome to Warblog. Today we're looking at the opening of the M5 highway. Interesting, because they've been <laughs> going at it for so long. If you look at all these things, most of them are part and parcel of this whole operation to capture the M5 highway. You know, I mean, if you look at any one of these, that's probably the M5 highway there. That's probably the M5 highway there. This is the men, so you're not going to see the M5 highway there. That's probably the M5 highway there. So, all of this stuff. You know, I mean, there it is. There, all of this stuff is to liberate the M5 highway. In actual fact, I'm not sure, but There might be a bigger map, Southern Iblib. See, there's the N5 highway. And so they had to battle through all of this to get past it. And here's the overall picture, I believe. So here we have the N5 highway almost in its complete format with, with Aleppo sort of just up here this Saraquib so we're not going as far as Aleppo there there's Idlib Samin so all of this and this is the 19th of December it's now the 14th, 15th of February so that's like three months two months it took them about two months to get to this stage here. And um, it's interesting because <laughs> Syrian armored battle tank fell from the bridge on the M5 highway. So presumably it was going along the M5 highway and it fell off, apparently. But there's the M5 highway. But there is a better video in here. Somewhere. Syrian army officially reopens M5 highway. There's a few videos, no, it's just the one. But the thing you'll see. Is... Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Earthworks. So you have to clear the earthworks. Serious earthworks, entrenchments. <laughs> C 
curious earthworks. So, so there you have the opening, and I, I don't know whether you could hear on the audio because uh, I've, there was a lot of shouting in um, Syrian, I believe. Um, and but basically, you saw a lot of the earthworks, including that really narrow bit, and um, you know, obviously they've just reopened it. But I'm just so, so tempted to sort of. You know, mention how messy it is. You know, it's not really. You know, it doesn't look like a a busy highway. <laughs> it looks like a dirt track. But um, I'm sure that they'll uh, they'll clean it up. But those earthworks were quite formidable, especially that little sort of slalom bit. Um, so these are earthworks that you've got to clear and minefields in order to open the highway and also to hold you know, all this ground. So let's just look. At where it starts. Now, the one thing to bear in mind is that There appear to be Hezbollah units, so here the yellow ones are Hezbollah units, but it doesn't mention Hezbollah, and there's not really much about them. But, if you look at the, um, the map, These are his bowler units there, look. So I've included them, but it doesn't sort of say that there are his bowler units. So it's hard to tell what the highway is and what my front line there is, look. But you see, we've got to push them all the way back to sort of about there, really. So you're going to get all of this ground. But presumably there's a break point where you sort of control the M5 highway, which I would say is about sort of here. Because there it is there. So as soon as you've got that much, or maybe just sort of that much, you've got a fair border but presumably you're pushing much further. So now obviously you've got to think before you move, so to speak, but I think there's three specific areas or sectors. So there's this sector, there's the Hezbollah sector and the northern sector. So they've got a battle group of tanks mechanised there, mechanised there. They've got a sort of pseudo battle group there with some other mechanised there and there. They don't really have much, but they've got some sort of numbers. Um, you've got the engineering companies, which will need to be brought in and at the very least preserved in order to get rid of the earthworks and things. Um, but you've got the Syrian Air Force and the Russian Air Force to come in and do certain things. So we would almost look at it from these two fronts. You know, we can almost, I mean, it's almost as though the, um, the Hezbollah have the, the hardest job. And there's a big long line there, look, that's just completely accidental, but, um, but it looks quite easy really to sort of push in. I mean, they haven't even got anyone in Regiment 46, which presumably they will do. Um, 
one thing to bear in mind, and it's, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference, but I haven't made a formal announcement, but um, basically artillery, the rules on artillery has changed. You can't move and fire. So all of these artillery units have to be stationary. And now, I sort of quite like that, um, although I'm a bit, you, you know, I, I've, I've left um, I've left rockets, so rockets can move and fire. I've sort of allowed that to make a distinction finally between rockets and artillery, because there's basically no distinction at all. Now, you know, now I don't think it's necessarily absolutely fair, because you know, if you're dealing with a day turn in some in some games, well, you could almost sort of move and deploy, whereas you know. So making the assumption that it's because um, you've got to unlimber and set the you know the pieces up accordingly, I, you know I just feel that it, it's a sort of it, it's not just simply a case of doing that. There's probably a little more involved with logistics and preparation and identification of suitable ground, and whereas the rockets are more sort of you know, shoot and scoot. Um, so I don't really know, um, you know, how balanced that is, but I like it as a rule because I think artillery is very powerful. I mean, you can move it and fire, move it and fire, and I don't think artillery is, re is really used that much in an advance, an offensive advance. You know, you, you figure out where you're going to put your artillery, you set it up, and then you start firing it, and hopefully you won't have to move it for a few turns. And then you move it again, set it up, and start firing it again for a few turns. So this will hopefully put, take away the power of artillery and make it make the game revolve a little more around thinking about where the artillery is going to be placed. But rockets are not don't have that restriction. So I, when I set it up, I did think, well, it's actually quite weak. So I doubled up on all the um, Hezbollahians, but I still think the it's, it's quite a weak position, but I'm, I'm sort of working on the theory that the um, the air power will, will, will really help. So I'm sort of tempted to tr try and destroy these irregular units here first, just because they're in stacks. So I'm going to try that. Um, I mean, you know, considering other targets. Now, other targets would be rocket so that might be a good stack to try but it's got air defense in there um, so that might be good um, here there's rockets but it's on its own here there's rockets but they're on their own rockets there but they're on their own rockets there so I mean there's two engineering companies there that might be good targets but I really don't think that there's anything more attractive than these two stacks. Now, if I can actually destroy one of them, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three against that, four against that. Let's just see how this works. Because I would like to do some serious damage against these stacks whilst they're stacked up. Now, I didn't think of that. You know, um, but that's not serious damage, is it? 1.3, 0, 1.2, that's not serious damage at all. We don't as much there as we did on the whole of the, the other lot. Okay, well they've been hit. See on this front here, if we take this as a front, I'm not sure what there is to, to actually sort of take. 
We've got two rockets there. We can move them forward and pound that. We try and take an advanced position in this sort of built up area. Um, Darashi Galley. Here. And they're entrenched. We'll move these units in to support that attack. Do we want to bring in some... So I want to put these in an advanced position here. No network is broken there. I'm going to have to fix that. Broken there as well. And there. I'm still not happy with the way roads work because they're not, you know, it's sort of like, well, so what? It's not, it's not so bad that you actually even notice. You know, you just drive straight across here with relative ease. I'm going to support this side with this rockets and this side with these rockets. The engineers really want to be sort of heading over this way to deal with these roads, to deal with the highway. We've got three mechanised units. I'm sort of more inclined to sort of bring them up here. Right. So that's that whole front sorted out. Let's put some rockets in here. Okay, and let's see what we can do with an attack. Three to one and an exchange. Now that was rubbish. Now I'm not going to get the Hezbollah support on this. I'm just going to put the rockets in. Because Hezbollah are going to use their rockets for their own operations. Another exchange, two three to ones and two exchanges, that's like not good. Okay. So the Hezbollah units, and I really want to be pushing these units away. But I think we want to be one, two, three. Well, I think we're going to want to take these, these rockets out, if we can. That's good. 5.4. Put some rockets onto that. Artillery, I should say. Okay.
So that's all the indirect fire accounted for. Now I don't really want to leave the artillery alone. Now, they should have been retreated, but they've not. And they've been hit, that's about it. What we could do So what I'd like to do hmm. So I'm tempted to go for these rockets like this A DR Now hopefully they won't get their massive defence because we're just motorised. Yes, we'll push them back as well, which is nice. And we've still got some offensive actions with them. But these are entrenched. And I don't want to move him away from the artillery. But I could bring these guys here to a grand assault there. Okay, so we push them back, and then if I can move them there. And a similar opportunity here. Okay. Now he's out of his entrenchment. So what I could do is move into there and get four units around this. Or an exchange. Okay, so that's that front. So here the Syrian army. We've got some rockets. What do we want to be pushing on? We've got quite a route down here. We look like we have quite good odds on this front. You know, if we, even if, if we were to take these out and these out, it would still be quite stirable. But with these, you seem to think, oh, this is going to be a real punch. We might have been better off considering what these people could do first. And obviously, we've got what we've got on the front lines. So we've got this unit, and this unit, and this unit, and this unit. 
there's four units that are sort of obviously to be targeted. But I'd like to get these rockets from these. See, the thing is, I might just move them in this direction into there. I only need one of them, though, isn't there? There are two. So we'll move them into there and fire on these rockets. On a waste. Okay. So I'm going to push these guys out if possible. Yes, they are. Got more rockets in range there. Where did those rockets come from? There. Perfect. It's two sets of rockets comes there. Tend to the pushing through there. I would also like to take that out. So, why do I want this armored unit? Because if I can push him back, that will put a lot of pressure on this flank here. One in exchange I felt impetuous, and maybe that was not good. Two to one with a DR. There's mines in there. I'm going to apply these rockets into this stack here because there's a lot of valuable stuff in there. Two point five point eight zero. Right. Oh, look at that, it just got there.
exchange. That wasn't good. I was hoping to also exploit the gap. DR. Okay. Mm. Do I want to commit him onto there and then all these tanks on their own into there? All they need is infantry support on that because they've got anti tank. Let's just try everything against that. This might be tough because I've got anti tank in there, but the other stuff is worth getting rid of if we can get it. An exchange. This is a push. I'm really struggling here. One to one an exchange, so. For all the hardware, we've not made a lot of ground. But we've got this one last ace. One, two, three, four, five. We could possibly get it there, knock him out and him. Or we could sort of bring it up this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Need to push these guys out first. I'm going to try this southern route through. Or not. Because I've got no more movement. And I'm going to push these ones as far this way as I can. Well, that's the first turn. I'm quite happy with that because we haven't made a huge amount of ground, but we've made some. We had some good placement over here. We've pushed the Esboli units fairly well forward. We haven't used, we've left him there deliberately to protect the artillery, which prevents them from doing too much of a counter attack. And we're not too exposed. We've got this flank here threatens, these probably will just retreat. But let's see what it looks like in the light of day. So they will probably want to split these units up, stop them being bombed again. Probably want to somehow get them all the way over here to support this because this is a heavy block coming up in all regards so how far can we get them well that's a fair distance Now, we've got compromise between, we want to get there quickly, but we don't want to leave a huge stack. So I'm going to stack them up two at a time. So that's the front. That's the second, so now we're losing hexes in the distance, but I think we can get there next turn. I'm going to push this anti-tank there, just so that we're not giving a nice tasty three stack. Oh, 
Oh no, he went the wrong way. Oh, that's fine, we've got as far as we need him to go. Right, so we've moved our reserves there. The anti-tank probably wants to go in the same direction actually, because that's where all the tanks are. So we stupidly stacked up a three there. Right, well, we've got some anti tank there. We're not going to be able to attack that stack. But we can send our anti tank in. One depression. One depression, that's because I've got an exchange. One damage, so it wasn't so bad. We'll have to get one of our tanks, possibly. The rockets are all in good order, so there's a nice tasty stack there. And then another stack there. Now we might want to get rid of the engineers, stop them from achieving their ability to clear the road up. But I did think of that, and it was stupid if it won, because we can go get some more engineers delaying it. So I'm going to target this big stack here. It's only one little rocket piece, but The thing is, the um, the Hayat Tahrir Al Sham units, they, they don't need, you know, every time they do a little bit of damage, they take the edge off the, the Syrian offensive. And, you know, they can't afford to lose too much, you know, they can't really afford to start taking significant fatigues. You know, two depressions on this armoured unit, which is pretty much the only armour they've got, the one down here. Um, you know, if they can continue to do that. We've got rockets down here. I'm going to push these guys, well, these engineers, what can they possibly do? Got some irregulars here. Hmm. Push them to there. I'm going to push him into there as well. I think he's out of range here. Oh, he's going to be in range, so no effect. Tank point four rockets. So all that stuff that really takes the edge off of their capability. Two point five, one point seven. So I would move into there, but we're entrenched. That would be quite a good position, really. I think I'm going to do that.
I think we need a tad more over here. So we've got these guys here. I think we can move them forward. Yeah, it's difficult. I'd like to improve that position, really. Anything there. This line here, do we want to push them back or? So we could attack that. I think that's everything really. And this is the most dangerous sector. But 42 minutes in, I'm not going to do another turn. I'd like to actually. I'm almost tempted to do another another video on turn two because it's really quite appealing. Because I sort of think they could possibly hold on. It just depends on how balanced this is. I mean, they're really going to be overrun here, I think. Now, if we can get all this stuff over there and push some of these anti-tank units in that direction. You know, we've already done quite a bit against that stack, you know, considering we really can't attack them directly. It's a little weak over here. But once they start to take hits and chaos ensues, opportunities arise. So it's actually quite interesting. I'm tempted to do another turn on this, another video. You, you know, um, I'm certainly not going to do it now. I don't want to rush it into the last 20 minutes. Um, I think I will actually, because, you know, I kind of, you know, I like doing the videos. You know, A, I like doing them, but I like getting the productivity up. I'm so busy that I'm sort of averaging about one a week which is like fairly poor, you know, I was doing maybe two or three a week before. And to be quite honest, I sit there and I think, why can't, why don't I just do like three or four a day? I mean, you know, well, the thing is, I'm not a man of leisure. <laughs> but I do think that is, well, the real easy answer to that is I don't have that amount of time. But I would like to, you know, I sort of think, well, you know, surely I can just get up, you know, have coffee, play games all day or something, you know, but, um, no, you've got to bear in mind, I do have to write these games, and that takes a bit of time, and I try to do it a bit here, a bit there, you know, I'll do something, and then I'll, write. okay, I'll do some terrain on this, and then I'll do something else, and then I'll come back to it, and I'll add some t locations, and, you know, but I'm, I'm looking at this, and I really like yeah, I think it's quite a an aesthetic layout. You know, there's sort of enough happening, and um, although I'm not really a fan of the contours, you can see I've, I've sort of rushed it a bit. I've missed all these tracks. It's quite hard to see the tracks actually in the system that I have, like the brown against the brown. But these are contours, you see, and I just don't think they really do anything. You know, for example, this is agriculture, this is Middle Eastern agriculture heading into sort of more Middle Eastern open, you know, rough desert. But this is an elevation, so this is higher. And so we have this, which is lower, and it follows the, um, follows this river along. 
as being a lower elevation, and here we have a higher elevation. But I don't think it really does much. I'm not sitting there thinking, oh, I'm going to use this ridge. You know, I'm just really not thinking that. In fact, maybe I should have. Maybe I could have put them there where that ridge is. Gives them, I think, an extra 10% bonus on their defence. Um, but I think it adds to an aesthetic. It certainly makes it look more involved. Um, but, yeah. But anyway, I'll leave it at that. I will, I will endeavour to play another turn on this. Because I enjoy it. And um, I'll give me an opportunity to get a cheaper video. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, I'll speak to you later. Cheerio.